What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast. We're talking about the latest and greatest cybersecurity news, as well as reality those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? So, uh, if you have not done so already, please go back. Monday, Tuesday, our topics. So, on Monday, we discussed uh, 23andMe uh, user records being hacked by cyber criminals. Uh, on Tuesday, we talked about Europol dismantling the Ragnar locker ransomware infrastructure and uh, nabbing one of their key developers. Uh, and then uh, in the future, Thursday will be a throwback Thursday. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put up, but it's going to be good. So you should check it out. <laughs> we have almost 500 episodes for me to dig through. Uh, and then Friday's everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. Without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this discussion um, is going to be based off an article from thehill.com <clears throat> by Philip Timotia. Um, it's entitled, Republican Congressman Says Labor Crunch Biggest Threat to U.S. Cybersecurity. I just want to say I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that this this person has gotten on board with what we have been saying for so long now, right? So, Representative Andrew Andrew Garbarino uh, from New York uh, had a Thursday morning event uh, that was talking about labor shortages within the cyber sector, right? And he's he's talking about how they pre- pre- present the biggest long term threat to U.S. cybersecurity, right? So, like Ryan has brought it up numerous times on, on on the podcast, you guys, like how we are so short in the cybersecurity and IT career field, right? And like that being the biggest threat going forward, like this is just going to be something that that. It's going to be. It's gonna. It's gonna hit a wall. It's gonna hit a point to where it's gonna be very noticeable to to even uh, the layman's, right? Like to 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 the people that aren't really paying too much attention to it right now because they're like, oh, it doesn't really affect me, right? Like it does, and in your everyday life, it does. You just don't realize how much, right? Whether it be you're not paying attention to the things that are happening um, around you when it comes to different ransomware things that are going different. Um, vulnerabilities and IoT devices you may have that you're not paying attention to or not updating, right? Things like that. So one of the quotes he has in this article is he says, workforce in five years, if we don't fix this this workforce problem, that's probably the biggest threat that we have toward ensuring that when it comes to cybersecurity, that we have toward ensuring that when it comes to cybersecurity. So he's talking about we need to start getting we need to start getting people in these positions right and we've talked about it 500 and they, they mentioned in the article um so let me see here let me find it uh cyber cyber cybersecurity workforce analytics platform cyberseek um, says there are 570,000 job openings, which creates opportunities for bad actors such as China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea to attack companies in the U.S. government because there is a shortage of 570,000, right? So this is what we've been addressing for so long on here, right? Like this is, the, this is kind of one of the reasons for the podcast as well, right? Just to get those people of color, right? Um, and, and again, we, we, we're we all accepting. We'll take everybody, right? But we're trying to, we're trying to help people of color as well, right? To get into this career field, to help with these things, knowing that there is a shortage that is, that is coming up, right? And again, the fact that you have a congressman, right? That's out here saying, hey, this is a big problem. Like this needs to be listened to. And I know the current administration is doing a lot for this and they're putting billions of dollars with a B, right, um, into this. You know what I mean? Uh, but you also have those companies, those those Microsofts, those Googles that are putting money into this effort as well, right? And they're not doing they're not doing the normal stuff they used to do, right? They're going uh, and they're looking at uh, people of color. They're looking at, uh, you know, women um, specifically, right? They're going to those minority groups, realizing that there is diversity needed in this as well, right? And I know I kind of steered off a little bit, but again, that's kind of, kind of one of the reasons for the podcast, you know what I mean? But um, this is something that people, if you're not paying attention, again, you don't, you don't have to take our word for it, right? Like, isn't that what LeVar Burton used to say on Reading Rainbow? You, or what, what was that? You don't have to take my word for it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> is, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a congressman that's in the know, right? They're getting all types of reports um, and things of that nature that are saying, hey, this is what we're seeing, you know what I mean? So the growing cyber threats that are out there, like we've said it on this on this podcast many a time, right? Before any bullet or bomb is dropped, what's going to happen is going to be a cybersecurity thing. You know what I mean? They're going to come in and start taking down um, your infrastructure 
your your defense systems they're going to start going that route before they do any of that so you need the people that are able to to handle that and so again there's a shortage of 570,000 people and it definitely needs to be addressed you know what i mean um and they they even mentioned in the article it's not just having the people it's having the right people right like what skills are out there and again this is where some of these companies you know are are, are leaning forward a little bit right like trying to get the training uh to these people right and this congressman talks about how um, getting children, uh, I don't want to make it sound like it's slave labor or anything like that, but like <laughs> starting starting these kids out at a young young age, like investing more money in K through 12 education, you know what I mean? Not just when you get to the upper echelon of education, you know, your colleges and things like that, but K through 12, he's talking about putting putting money into this to try to get these these children cyber smart. And the thing is, we're kind of already there, right? Like, the, like I know with my, at least my younger two children, right? Um, they're doing more in school when it comes to using technology and things of that nature. Right. So um, e even like during COVID, it was even more prevalent, right? Because children were staying home, you know what I mean? So they would have to have their, their Chromebook or their laptop or whatever um, issued to them. And they'd have to know how to work around that and do some stuff, you know? So um, it, it's something that needs to be addressed. And again, don't just take our word for it, right? We got a congressman from New York that's saying the same thing, right? Wants to invest the money, talks about talks about needing to invest more in education to, to, to kind of stop this threat. But Ryan, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do like the approach of, of uh, kind of getting kids ready for for progression into that, right? We always talk about STEM or, or STEAM, if you add arts to it as well. Um, and just trying to get that pipeline flowing uh, from K through 12. So it's good to see that that he has the same mindset, right? It's also good to see it goes across party lines, right? Um, the uh, the Biden administration has already been trying to work towards that goal with their objectives. And uh, like this uh, Republican congressman also feels the same way uh, with like, I'm, I'm sure there's some ideological differences between the two, but at, at the end of the day, the general, general uh terminology is we need more people we need them quickly to fill these these gaps um so we're, we're asking people to pivot from other careers into cyber but ultimately we're going to need a steady flow of people coming up through um high school who have the capability or the skills to you know replace these people as they start to age out um which is something that's also not being really talked about like yeah we need a bunch of people but you're getting people who are already uh not necessarily uh, are all older people, but you have people who are pivoting from other careers who, uh, you know, they've already worked a career or half a career, and now they're pivoting to cybersecurity. At some point, they're going to age out of it as well. Uh, and then you'll have more gaps, right? So you need younger people who are already kind of um, invested in cyber to replace those people. The same thing goes for medical, the same thing goes for uh, law and uh, things of that nature, right? You always need a bunch of people to backfill the people who are currently uh, doing it, who, who may just decide to not do that anymore in their career. So uh, he's attacking from all angles. So I, so I like it. I think it's a good initiative uh, and I hope to see more of it. Um, what's I, I kind of find interesting is um, like not only how the, the parties are kind of aligned on it, but the numbers always fluctuating. So <laughs> there's a there's a million vacancies, there's 700,000 vacancies, there's 500,000 vacancies. But all that says to me is there's a lot of vacancies. <laughs> we don't exactly know how many, but there's a lot. And then with more legislation coming down the, the pipe, right, you have your, your Fed ramps and things of that nature, uh, which are, are now starting to have variants, right? It's like like the, uh, the MCU out here. You have uh, Texas ramp and state ramp and all other types of... Uh, variants of all these, um, I, I would say, higher level federal regulations. Um, and we have 50 states. So if all of them decide to adopt it in a different way, you need more people to then know how uh, this cyber thing works and how to make it applicable to your business. So if anything, this goes to show the, the government has a vested interest in putting the money in there. And then the private sector uh, and public sector has it, it also needs to invest and hire people to bring in those necessary skills um, to to cover our bases because it um, I'm not I'm not for a bunch of red tape. However, I think cyber is starting to finally catch up to where it needs to be. So there's more red tape coming, um, and you need people who are invested, and understand it, and who have a passion for it. And I think you'll get a lot more of those people. Not only the people who are trying to cross over into cyber, bringing their transferable skills, but then you have the younger generation coming in who already understands it. Right? It's already baked in. It's kind of like your supply chain, right? Uh, if you if you bake in security from the beginning, then you have a better result as opposed to trying to cover your bases later on. So 
that's kind of what they're doing with the uh the 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 k through 12 pipeline as well so i think it's a great initiative i, I hope it i hope keep the same energy <laughs> for the next five to ten years as we finally catch up right um and hopefully we stay this course so that way we have the right people in the right places and and this is just one congressman is saying this right like he just went out in public and, and said this but like the hope is you know there are other people in, in the background that are like yeah you know I, I i understand the need for that right people on committees for education and things like right. that, that can actually make this happen you know what i mean yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I, I feel it's it's finally coming to a head where we're we're trying to be more cybersecurity minded. Not only because of all of the uh, the attacks of the past three years, right, disrupt the supply chains, things of that nature, but uh, just having uh, entities like TikTok, right, where we don't have the uh, the control of the operator of the system, right. So we we need the people to to kind of understand better what these risks are. Uh, so that way they don't continue to fall into the the same uh, patterns and traps. You got to convince them in between dances, though, right? Because that's what they're doing. Right, but if you ta if you target the age group, they'll <laughs> kind of understand a little bit better, right? You might be making the next, you know, Jeff Bezos or or whomever, right? He or she will uh, create another entity um, that that captures your PII, but it'll be on our soil. <laughs> so we we make the next generation of TikTok, but it'll be U.S. based, uh, or you know, or people finally understand that hey i can't share this information or hey i i i have an idea that can help uh you know solve a solution to the passwordless future or things of that nature right so we stop getting trapped uh, again like we talked this week like 23 and me like that that's uh that's an issue um if if only we could figure out a way to get away from passwords <laughs> That would be great. And we know Google and Apple and all and, and Microsoft are working on that. But what does the future past that look like? Right. Um, and then if you're targeting these these kids K through 12, right, like they might have an amazing idea of what the future uh, future holds. So we'll see we'll see how it all comes to fruition. But I, I'm very optimistic that uh, the, the people across both aisles kind of see that there's an issue and they, they both want to uh, work to solve it. So. We'll see how they get there, but definitely continue to check us out throughout the week. So Monday and Tuesday are our topics, Wednesday discussion, uh, Thursdays either a throwback or a Ask Us SP episode. So this week will be a throwback, uh, and then Fridays everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So definitely tune in for that one, so you can hear uh, Channing talk about Spider Man too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I got like we'll talk about it, but. <laughs> I didn't get as much play time as I was hoping, but uh, hit up all the websites to go by our name. You give me a personal I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. Stay safe, stay secure.